right. Again, we've talked already about regulations. Regulations are choking our economy. The tax system <coughs> is too high, especially for corporations. It's one of the highest in the world. But the biggest thing that's killing our economy right now is the debt. It grows by $76,000 every second. And what the super committee is doing, frankly, as somebody has suggested, is only going to change whether we go over the cliff at, at 75 miles an hour or 65 miles an hour within a handful of years. That is the thing that's killing us. I don't have a category for why our leaders can't turn this thing around, except I kind of do. They don't know what to cut. I wish we had time for me to ask you, what do you think the fastest growing budget item in the last 20 years has been? Some people would say defense and social security and so on. It's means-tested welfare. Means-tested welfare has grown far faster than any other category. In fact, our debt has just passed $15 trillion. We declared war on poverty back in 1964. We have more poor, by the way, percentage-wise and numbers today than we ever had. But do you know how much we've spent on the war on poverty since 1964? In excess of $16 trillion. All the wars that we have fought from the Revolutionary War to the present, the real wars, have cost us $6.4 trillion by comparison. This is the thing we need to change. Now, if we were helping people, it was Ronald Reagan, by the way, in 1988, who said that a few years ago, federal government declared war on poverty, and I think he had a twinkle on his eye. Poverty won, he said. <laughs> he went on to say, not only is it expensive, but it hurts the very families that we're trying to help because it breaks the family apart. We now have over 40% of people born out of wedlock in this country, which is the very recipe for perpetual generational poverty. And we make people perpetually dependent on giving. That's not loving. We can do so much better. We need to do so much better. Thanks so much. I must have got another repeated question because I didn't hear the answer from Mr. Heckman. What do you believe is the best economic policy for achieving the highest level of prosperity in our nation? And what is the government's role in growing the economy? Okay, great. <clears throat> How many of you, over the course of your lifetimes, like me, have rolled your eyes when entrepreneurs and small businessmen create jobs, and then some politician on TV talks about how they were responsible for creating jobs? <clears throat> the one statistic that ought to dominate the debate for the U.S. Senate in Michigan in 2012 is this. And surely Debbie Stabenow, since politicians take credit, will accept responsibility for the fact that in the 10 years she's been in the United States Senate, Michigan has lost 800,000 private sector jobs, the worst job loss in America. So I've got three things I would say the government, as a matter of policy, ought to do to help Michigan and America create jobs for Americans. Number one, I ran the campaign in the 1980s that made Idaho a right to work stick. I'm a founding member of Michigan Freedom to Work to pass that same legislation here. And I think both Michigan and the United States should pass right-to-work legislation and make all 50 states more likely recipients of new plant site locations from around the world. It's a jobs issue. Number two, drill baby drill, frack baby frack. We have an estimated trillion barrels of oil, more than the other 10 top oil producing countries in the world combined. We ought to be an oil selling country and use the proceeds to pay down our debt instead of being dependent on countries that don't like us, some of which would like to blow us up. Imagine being able to tell Saudi Arabia and Iran they can go pound their ample supply of sand, and we're energy secure. <laughs> Number three, reduce or eliminate the federal death tax, the federal capital gains tax, the personal income tax, the payroll tax, and the corporate income tax. And my favorite proposal is the fairtax.com because, and there's all kinds of reasons, great tax reforms spend a lot of money, uh, save a lot of money by shutting down the IRS completely. Yeah. And remove that burden from the peace of mind of the American citizenry for our children and generations to come. I have a follow-up from Mr. Glenn on that. I yes, sir. Did I hear you say that you would support a federal right to work? Absolutely. And what's the constitutional authority for that? The constitutional authority is that we have a right as a constitutional government to act in the welfare of the people of this country. 
And in 1935, the United States passed the Wagner Act, which imposed this compulsory unionism system on all 50 states. And that law says that every employee shall have the right freely and without fear of penalty to form, join, and assist the labor organization or to refrain from any such activity except where union membership is required as a condition of employment. Gives you a right on one hand, takes it back. A national right to work law would only take out those 11 words so that we were free to choose anywhere in America. All right, Mr. Rand, what do you believe in? Oh, like, I would not be a good referee in football. <laughs> okay, to answer your question, there's no constitutional authority. What happens is, the I totally support the right to work. I think it's a great thing, but in a free country, we don't want a federal government that imposes a one-size-fits-all solution, whether we agree with it or whether we don't agree with it. Just like Gary said, we had the Wagner Act. That was a mistake. We had the uh, Davis-Bacon Act. That was a mistake. This, even though they were good ideas at the time, we want to get rid of those programs. We want the people of the states to take care of their birthright. The Tenth Amendment says if it's not the Constitution, which it isn't, it falls to the people or the states. And the right to work falls to that, and the states are doing a good job implementing it. I would simply point out that I, I'm a Tenth Amendment advocate myself, but I think there are things that rise to a universal standard. Let me give you some examples. Our right to keep and bear arms, in which I'm fully supportive, is a constitutional standard guaranteed in all 50 states. The Declaration of Independence says we have a God-given right to life. Should that be a universal standard that applies to all 50 states? I think it should, but it doesn't today. And similarly, I think the right to have a job and feed your family without being forced to give money to a left-wing labor union that spends your money on things you don't believe in ought to be a universal right guaranteed every American. Yeah. Mr. Durant, what do you believe is the best economic policy for achieving the highest level of prosperity in our nation, and what is the government's role in growing this economy? <laughs> The most important policy that the government can follow is one simple principle. If you allow people to keep more of what they earn, prosperity will occur. What you are looking at is your tax return the next time around. It's on a postcard, it's one rate, it's done one time, and then you go back and do what you do with your money and your work and protect your freedom. Number one. Number two, we have the ability in the United States of America to become energy exporters. We need to drill now, drill safely. We have clean coal, we have oil, we have natural gas, we have shale. We not only will defund our enemies, we will bring down the cost of energy across the globe, across our country, and we will be creating American jobs in American communities that will go on for a hundred years with the amount of resources that we have. All we have to do is let freedom work. Number three, Scotty's right, the government needs to get out of the way. Repeal Obamacare. Full Employment Act for Accountants and Lawyers. Repeal it. <laughs> we have to recognize that only freedom works. People will make mistakes. It's not all perfect. But it is the only way in which prosperity for all people can work. I was in Cassopolis on Wednesday meeting in a diner with truck drivers and farmers. All they're asking for is the ability to do what they do well. Let them do that and get the government out of the way.